Welcome back, everybody. No time to rest, no time to relax. We've got ourselves another series here. We've got Maneski taking on Lie Gaming. I'm Gods. Joining me for this game is going to be Blaze. How are you doing, Blaze? Are you with me? Yep, I'm here and looking forward to this matchup, man. Of course, DAC is a really big deal for teams on the lower rungs here. Lie Gaming, they're they're definitely not the, the big dogs in China, so they want to try to at least pick up some scraps here or maybe even get all the way through to some of the, the later stages of the tournament. But Mineski, uh, with the recent reformation and just not the best track record, they really are hungry for this one. So I'm excited to see exactly what they pull out in this game. Yeah, and uh, for those of you wondering, uh, on the stream saying, where's Dota TV? We had a long first series, so this game started. The draft was already done by the time we uh, hopped on over. So we're casting from Dota TV. So unfortunately, no English cast inside the game. But uh, there is a schedule to keep to. Uh, so with some of these series going a bit longer than scheduled, we couldn't get into the game. But we'll get things underway here. The draft already complete. As said, we weren't here when the draft began. We weren't in the game. But we'll introduce our teams to start things off. Live Gaming on the Radiant side. Going to have XDD on a Bristleback in the safe lane for now. XZ on the Axe. Super on the Ancient Apparition. 5400 on the Rubik. And Secret on the Ember Spirit for the Radiant side. Yep, and looking over at Mineski here, just going left to right, I've got Jay, aka Bimbo, on the Queen of Pain boots first. Interesting build-up for him. It's going to be 5593, also known as Oa, running on the Vengeful Spirit here. We're going to have, over on the Tide, Yamaguchi, or Terong. And then we've got Ogre Magi, that's RR or Ralphie. And finally, the Lycan, that's <laughs> listed as stand-in, not secret, but that is actually Polo. Yeah. So Polo is running on the Lycan here, and it uh, looks like he's going to go for a pretty early bottle alongside his Stout Shield and Pool Tangos on the mid. What are secret players? Everyone wants to join Team Secret, apparently, today, with both teams having a secret player on their team. But Mineski have had some recent roster reshuffles. There was talk of them maybe not making it into uh, DAC unless they submit a roster in time, but they did pull together a, a last-minute roster with two new players in. Read some interviews. The team seemed pretty confident that these are some of the best upcoming players in the Philippines and to expect big things from this current roster. But, I mean, I guess you're not going to say these players suck and we're not going to do well. So, I, I believe them, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till I start seeing them perform before I, I start hyping them up. Yeah. I mean, the, the cool thing is they're back to a full Philippine roster. So, you get to hype the Pinoy Dota on that, but yeah, they do lose out Johnny, who is a very skilled player. There were some communication issues and stuff like that. So, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can accomplish. Obviously, we've seen a lot from Jay, though. Apparently, he has some limitations as far as how often he can practice. So, although very skilled, you know, real life gets in the way. We'll see how they perform here. Already going for an interesting matchup. Like, if you look at the bottom lane, we've got Queen of Pain versus Bristleback. I don't think I've ever seen that matchup, but it's it's one where he's just going to kind of keep his distance with the Shadow Strike and Boots and get what CS he can. All right, well, we'll see how things go. The other thing which, I mean, just to bring up quickly, there is always going to be the, the China vs. SEA, the server problems, where I, I'm not sure how it works. My guess would be it's like one game on Perfect World, one on Singapore, but uh, for some of these teams, there could be some potential uh, latency issues in some of these games, but so far, it seems, seems to be going okay. Jay in the bottom lane is holding his own as far as CS goes, and... It's good to see Queen of Pain make a resurgence. I mean, I know you're saying there's some interesting matchups in the Queen of Pain one, especially. I'm, I'm curious to see how uh, things go here for uh, Maneski and for Jay specifically. Ooh. Big rune fight, though. Yeah, uh, super. Going to be the one actually looking like a possible first blood here. But here comes the three hero chilling touch. It's going to be, well, the secret stand in for uh, the Radiant side. Getting the first blood. Queen of Pain picks up the bottom bounty room, but the chase is on. They want not just one, they want a second, and they'll get the second. Rubik gets the kill with the Fade Bolt and Light Gaming. Find two kills early on. Fighting Ember Spirit around runes is just never never a very fun proposition. Yeah, pretty difficult. Uh, there was a chance for actually 5400 to go for a Telekinesis onto the cliff, and Venge would have been stuck there for quite some time, but getting the first Blood Gold is huge. So she is going to be uh, a threat. She is going to be on the map. They're actually smoking down bottom as we speak, but they are going to be able to get the first Blood money off of her. We'll see if they can actually turn around the Bristleback. Uh, 0 2 one build. He's rather tanky, but this is three heroes against one. They should be able to bring him down. Yeah, I I like this rotation too, because if you can get Queen of Pain one of those heroes where if you can snowball the Queen of Pain, it really works in your favor. But you can see good old fashioned Min Mineski DC and well we've now got ourselves an official Dota 2 game. We've got some pauses <laughs> coming in. It's it's been christened. This is the Dota 2 Asia Championships and the opening game for I think this is both these two teams opening match, so mm -hmm. we'll see how things go go for them. 
Yeah, I mean, it's not the hardest matchup to start off with, right? So I think that both of them are feeling relatively confident as opposed to going up against one of the the big, big scary tier, I wouldn't say tier one teams. Most of the tier one teams have been invited, but the, the kind of top tier of what we see here in the qualifiers. Yeah, but in either case, I mean, it would be great to get the ball rolling with uh, some early kills. Obviously, Log Gaming already struck the first two bloods, but you mentioned Queen of Pain, Snowball, Lycan is a very tempo-oriented hero. If they can get just a few kills in their favor, they can start looking to control the Roche Pit, push towers. They're really objective-based on their team yeah. lineup, and of course, that's very important to have because the late game kind of goes towards lie right now uh, with the Bristleback and the Ember. Not guaranteed, obviously. The, the Ravage is a big uh, factor in those mid- to late-game team fights, but... As far as hard scaling, light gaming have a lot to offer. I feel for Mineski, the big thing is going to be just not get too far behind early because they don't need to have a lead to take Roshans and to get control there because you've got Lycan, you've got Ventral Spirit, you've got pretty good team fight from the Tide, the Queen of Pain. But if Lie Gaming just get a really big early game lead, Bristleback and Axe are just such snowball heroes. Ember Spirit uh -huh. as well. Like, I feel around that 15 minute mark. If Lie Gaming have themselves all their core items in like a 3 to 5k lead, that will turn into very quickly a 10k lead, and Mineski losing complete control of the Roshan pit, they'll start losing all their outer towers and just be completely unable to take a fight. So I don't think Mineski need to dominate the lanes, but they definitely need to make sure they aren't. Like that fight around the top rune was not something they can really afford to have happen again. Yeah, most definitely. So, I, I mean, there's a lot of potential for the Axe to build up early towards the Blink Dagger. Uh, probably going for the Tranquil Boots for now to segue into that. And uh, at least for the moment, it might be a 1v1 matchup for him against the Tide. Uh, as I'm assuming the supports will kind of counter roam. As soon as you see people putting pressure on your bristle back, you need to respond. But we'll see that more directly here as the smoke will break loose if they get too close. Have to watch this Observer Ward. Yeah, this likely to spot them before they come in. There we go. He sees them mm -hmm. now. He's also at level 4, so there's two points in the bristle back. And, well, they'll de-ward it, but that is not the outcome you were hoping for if you're Mineski. Definitely. And there's going to be a, another roam towards mid. They do not have cold feet, but they still have a lot of damage coming out with the chilling touch. And yeah. it's not easy for Lycan to escape a gank like this. I think the cold feet isn't really needed. Ember Spirit alone with two points in Searing Chain should be more than enough, assuming he can hit the Searing Chains, which should be pretty straightforward. He gets yeah. him away from the creep wave, and that's going to be a dead Lycan now. The Ember Spirit getting the last hit, so he gets his second kill of the game, and things not looking good early on here for Mineski. Yeah, and it's interesting that the supports go back up top. This is a tough decision to make here, but in this case, they're like, okay, we're getting the most out of the top lane. We can push the tide back. We can guarantee Axe the fastest blink dagger he can desire. And uh, at this point, the bottom is just too heavily contested. Uh, the supports here, Ancient Apparition and Rubik, are good in like 3v1 pickups, but in big skirmishes, you oh, need more. Top you need lane, they've pulled the tide out with a lift into a call here. Here comes the AA. It looks like we're going to be seeing a dead tide hunter. One more spin. XZ not finding it. The right clicks, unfortunately, they don't have Chilling Touch, but what they do have is the Ice Vortex, and that's going to be just barely enough for 5400 to pick up that kill on the Rubik. Yeah, very close call there, because the Cold Fate was a little bit late, but they are able to bring him down. He pops an extra Sav, too, so 100 gold down the drain there. And uh, Mineski just seemed kind of lost in the laning stage. They don't know exactly where they need to be uh, to yeah. deal with the major threats from Lie Gaming. And I guess you can attribute that a bit to Vision. Like, they, they have a couple good wards up, but nothing on the lane. And so, Lie Gaming's movements have been completely uh, avoiding all their main points of observation, and that's going to be difficult to respond to. The other big thing is they failed to deal with their pull. They put the sentry in the common mm -hmm. spot on the left side, and it didn't reach the observer ward. So they didn't deal with their pull, which meant they couldn't really contest top lane. They needed the pull camp for their supports, otherwise they just fall behind too much on XP. So not being able to deal with their pull has really hurt them, it feels like, in the laning stage. So I'm trying to think what they're really getting out of this laning stage. Obviously, the Lycan's going to be able to build up and rotate to the jungle. This will give a solo lane to maybe, like, the Ogre to build up towards his multicast. But, I mean, it's really the Queen of Pain that needs to take action. Around level 7, maybe 8, he needs to be just getting active with his ultimate, with his powerful nukes, and really making his presence down across the map. He has a lot of great tools built in, especially with the kind of one-point wonder blink. But they're under so much pressure already that he's got to make some big plays happen in order yeah. for them to get their feet back underneath them. And the worry is, around the time Queen of Pain's ready to get involved, Axe is going to already have a Blink Dagger. So yeah. we, we may even see Axe get involved before Queen of Pain moves off this lane. Axe gets Blink, TP's bottom, and you're looking at a dead Queen of Pain, I'd say. So mm -hmm. this Queen of Pain could be caught out by surprise. And a kill on the cop, the one hero who seems to be farming well, would be catastrophic for Mineski. Um, One nice thing they do have going for them is they're stacking up the Ancients, but this Observer Ward scouting it out will make it difficult for Tide to pick that up early. Yeah. 
Top lane, Axis going in once more, looking for another kill on this Tidehunter. Does not have the support back up just yet. They're a bit far away and will get scouted out by an Observer, which expires. But the DD rune, this is probably going to be a possibly quick tier 1 tower going the way of uh, Light Gaming. They're going to draw the creep aggro. Actually, Axis is going to look to take the creeps thing. He wants his, he wants his blink dagger. Oh yeah, he's going to get it too, man. So much arm going his way. Uh, one assist under his belt, 38 last hits, and the tower pretty soon as well. That's a very fast blink dagger, and... It, really, they don't have a great answer for it. Like, the swap later would be a good answer, but they defend just level 3. Like, this is such a high-tempo axe, and he's going to be able to do so much work. Well, top tier 1 tower, guaranteed to go down. It looks like now no TP's inside. Axel has his, have, has his blink, whether he gets the last hit or not at this stage. And that looks like he's going to be given the last hit now as well. So that gets him blink dagger money. He can buy a TP if he wants to try go bottom for the Queen of Pain kill I mentioned. I think... The tide at this point has been shut down, and we'll get some farm in the jungle. I think your best bet is to go for a kill on either Lycan or Queen of Pain with this blink. Sure. Yeah, I, I think the Lycan would actually be a pretty high value kill too, but it really depends on how well they respect Jay. Obviously, he's usually the one that carries this team. We saw on IAP Execration how well he was able to do work with his kind of snowbally heroes, the ones that, after they got some good farm, were able to just put the game on their shoulders, and we've seen so much historically what he can accomplish. They're going to go on mid here, a couple of stuns available, but probably not enough to threaten this Ember. Yeah, with, with Fire Remnant out, I think the escape should be quite possible. He can even disjoint uh, with yeah, a Fire Remnant behind. Or beta, I mean, we see this really nice smoke movement. So that should be a dead Lycan, perhaps? Um, they're going to swing Axe and Rubik down bottom lane even, as bottom rune looks to be taken by Jay, and this is something they may contest. They've got good Radiant Vision, as you mentioned. They've got Vision on the Ancients, but more importantly, this bottom rune right now, and Jay... One blink call could be his death. And wow. the Guardian Rune on the ground, yeah. the dunk is there. Telekinesis is not even needed. Now on the high ground, Emmysprit goes and gets a two hero steering chains. And with the Flame Guard, this is looking like more Jeez. casualties from Ineski. Triple kill for uh. Axe. Easy peasy. Oh yeah, my gosh, that was brutal. It's been Patrick coming out for him. That's absolutely insane. Just using the speed boost that they got off one target to just build up that momentum. They just don't have the HP pools to deal with that. Like, the Tide is the only one that's anywhere close to 900 HP. Uh, the the Lycan gets there, but, like, obviously he wasn't involved at all. They just chained one kill into two more, and it's all about that Ember Spirit getting the chains off so they can yeah. follow through and unveil the Blink Dagger in a huge flourish. I mean, they knew it was coming soon, but eight minutes getting a triple dunk after the Blink comes out. Ah, uh, that's demoralizing, if nothing else. And XC, I mean, he's only just level 7, but suddenly he's got 1,700 gold at 9 minutes in with a Blink Dagger. So, Trenkles, Wand, Blade Mail, whatever he maybe wants to go for at this point. Items are plenty. Get yourself a Midas if you really want to reward your hard work here. There's just so many things he can do. Meanwhile, top lane, it looks like we could be seeing another kill here tied. He's good at TP, but he can't really use it against the uh, Searing Chains then. Well, Chilling Touch, Slide of Fist, easy pick off. Yeah, they could have gone actually gotten a free kill on the courier. It was crowing a bottle, so it was very slow. Okay. They saw it, but they chose to go for the hero kill. They know they need experience. They're under leveled, and a little bit of gold going their way will not turn this game around. So they go in for the big flank. They want to bring down XDD. Yeah, Mineski looking for their first kill of the game. Queen of Pain may have to commit an ultimate for this one. I feel as XDD still alive for the time being, and one more scream could be enough here. Jay getting very low. The oh, quills is going to add up, and he gets one. He's going to TP out as well. Anchor smash is there, or could he ravage? He Get out of there! Oh no! Nothing going the way of Maneski here. The flame. Actually, that fire remnant does go their way. What? Okay. okay. Oh, but... <laughs> well, like, that fire remnant. I think he thought he had the kill on the ogre, but he had to fire remnant all the way to like mid lane and then back the bottom lane. So the time the the trip took him, ogre backed off far enough that he may survive this. Maybe. Is he the shadow strike there? He doesn't have mana for remnant just yet. He's, I mean, he's not going to die immediately, but I think they can chase him down if they know that no reinforcements are coming. Yeah. But with this pause, you got to think, okay, who has TP scrolls? We've got Ancient Apparition uh, with a TP, not much mana, and we've got Rubik with a TP, and yeah. anybody rotating should be able to bail him out. I think Ogre, if he's outside of Immolation range, of course, will live, but as far as those two pursuing the Ember Spirit all the way back to his tower, even without a spell, I think he just walks. Yep. Well, we'll see what happens here. The scary thing is Axe is missing off the map. They don't know exactly where he is. Ogre dies to the flame god damage, so it was, it was still in range for that one, and, well, it looks like Ember Spirit going to be A-OK. -okay. Queen of Pain still chasing, has a Sonic Wave, will Blink Scream Sonic Wave, Ember Spirit still alive, gets the Searing Chains as well, Jay goes down, and Ember Spirit still alive and kicking, still has that heart beating on 15, make it 30-ish HP. 
And Rubik, he stole an Anchor Smash. Not a bad spell to have in your arsenal right now. Against the melee heroes of the Tide, Ogre, and Lycan. So, still not a single casualty on Lie Gaming side. Nothing is going right for Mineski here. Zero kills. And the two most important heroes here, the Bristleback and the Ember Spear, both one hit for death on the ganks against them but jay withholding the ultimate against the bristleback and uh there the the pause giving a little bit strategic time to know rubik needed to tp and they even turn it around against jay yeah. he's died twice he's gotten absolutely nothing and this is just atrocious for mineski the I sonic wave being on cooldown too that's second. and ravage they use sonic wave and ravage and now they've got a minute and a half without these ultimates. They cannot fight at all. And even with those ultimates, turns out they couldn't really fight. Yeah. I mean, Lycan's items look okay. The flads and medallion, but he doesn't have boots. Like, he is completely relying on a shapeshift movement speed or just jungling. He's not going to be able to chase anybody down. So, yeah, they're just going to go full passive mode. And this gives plenty of opportunities for the Radiant to just spread the map, get some good control. There was a nice D ward on the bottom rune ward we were talking about, but they've already blocked off the stacking, so Tide's not bouncing back anytime soon. This is given Light Gaming, the dominant kind of 10 to 15 minute start that means Mineski can't really go for Rosham using the Lycan Venge. They can't really take team fights even when they have their ultimates, just because there just isn't quite enough damage. And you give this Bristle back a mech or something, you just you act as a Vanguard, he's gonna have a Crimson Guard no time at all. This is just gonna go from bad to worse. He Searing Chain's gonna oh, catch up Jay at bottom lane. The Blink Call is there. It's a dead Queen of Pain. The Duck not even used. Probably would have liked to have it just for the chase onto the Ogre Magi, but they're gonna get this kill regardless, and no backup inside. Two more kills go the way of Light Gaming. I was a little bit worried about how they were gonna find kills on like gaming's lineup if they executed poorly if they were had like if they were up against a really competitive team that played really smart in their positioning and didn't overextend at all like gaming's kill potential is limited in the sense that like the ice blast and the clung blade require your opponents to be very low already like they're they're executing abilities and the like fade bolt and other factors don't really add in that much damage but the fact that they've just been able to snowball this forward, they don't need to rely on Bristleback getting four or five stacks of Quill Spray up. They can just run in there, call, blast, and dunk. And at this point, there's no point of return for Mineski with these low HPs. Yeah, Mineski have their ulties back, but all it takes is, yeah, one blink call and a Queen of Pain, and she's dead before she can cast a single spell. Even a, just a Searing Chains to lock her in place, and that's a dead Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain... Yeah, made a move to a bottom rune and was like, wait a second, this is not a place I want to be. Not without Vision. Mineski right now, Vision near the mid lane in their own jungle, but nothing to help them out of this bottom lane. It's actually Light Gaming with a nice high ground ward up near the tier 2 tower that can see a lot of these hero rotations. The tower gets denied, but, well, it hasn't been denied. It's in deny range, and trying I don't think to Light Gaming care too much about the money at this point. They're just looking to just kind of get map control and push out all these lanes as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If the side of Mineski doesn't get to do Roche within the first, like, 18 minutes of the game, that's a win automatically for Light Gaming, because they have a Venge and a Lycan. Even the Ogre helps out quite a bit with this, so... The fact is, losing that tower loses a bit more control over the Roche. They're really not sure where to deward. Like, you see them dewarding the, the lower eastern cliff, but they have a, actually an observer on the northern eastern cliff, and it's just... Yeah. They, they really can't control the pit, and that's not going to be... That, what their draft was designed to get them back in the game via Roche, and that's just not enough for them right now. We got to this point where even with these these oh, the team fight with the Ravid Sonic Wave up, there's a mech and there's also like a Vanguard on the Axe, a point booster. Everyone's so tanky that there's no one you can really kill unless you're going to focus down the supports first, like the AA and the Rubik. We're not looking at much good coming the way of Mineski in a team fight, and even then, it's like you're blowing ultimates to maybe kill supports. Axe in good position to blink in, but he doesn't want the Yoga. He wants something bigger. Another tower that, gets denied. There's the a the blink call. Only not... catches the ogre for now. Like I'm going to shape shift in. We'll see Tide throw a Ravage kind of defensively here. There's still a mech available, and that's going to be able to heal him back up. Ravage gets stolen oh. by the Rubik, and the turnaround is real. The dunk start coming out. Four for nothing. Rubik is going to be still alive. He gets locked in place by the call. Five for nothing. 18 to zero. Like gaming, demolishing Mineski. I can't even get one freaking kill somebody set up a relief story. fund for this team this is just I, I literally dire straits their new game should be get a kill and call gg and just like that's the highest note you can get end the game on like i don't know i mean i wanna i wanna hope for pinoy dota to research just do something crazy and come back but right now the map is entirely controlled by gaming they've got the ice blast advantage as far as the fact that nobody can magic wand heal and now they've got this mech on bristleback everybody can live 
two taunts in one fight automatically means fly gaming take it away and in this case with no casualties well we'll see smoke picked up by the ogre and probably realizing all we can really do is hope for some kills here i don't want to do it but we'll check out the gold lead and it's thirteen thousand at 15 minutes Anything around 1,000 a minute is just catastrophic. That's like as, as stompy as it gets, and that's kind of where we're at right now. A little under, but we're seeing a dominant performance coming out of light gaming. Yeah, and there's just, I mean, there's one jungle for Minesi to farm, and that's soon going to be contested, I believe, by light gaming. They're making sure the Ancients and the Roche are controlled by Ice Blast, or just manually scouting to make sure they don't smoke in. And actually, up top, he's just going to be able to avoid a lot of this damage via Flame Guard and Slight. And yep. this is a 3v1 position, but they know that they just don't have the lockdown. Like, Ogre getting one Fire Blast won't be enough. Yeah, you can easily disjoint the Magic Missile if you need to. And, well, Ravage still in cooldown. They're going to make their move... Towards the top lane, it seems. Well, at least AA poking around this top rumor, and it seems maybe just a swing back. And light gaming themselves can take Roshan if they want. Even just the one point in Nasal Goo, they've got tanky frontliners. Would force Mineski to come and fight them there, and right now is not the time for Mineski to be taken a fight. They will have Blink on Tide. That's the ever so small good news right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see what Yamaguchi can do. I mean, it's pretty much the midnight hour for them. Anything. Positive would be a huge net gain for them, especially with, of course, the 6.82 rubber band. Like, they have such a disadvantage as far as net worth goes that this is a huge factor, just getting any kills they can. I like even going to do their best to prevent it, but if they get a little bit too aggressive, it's very possible this will turn. Right now, it's not like a Crimson Guard for Axe, for example. It's go He's going for the Aghanim, so although he is very tanky, it's very possible to at least get a pick on the Rubick or the, the AA, but st looking at Rubick, he might just go for a quick, like, solo Ravage with, like, the last 10 seconds of the spell, but it looks like yeah. he hasn't found his opening. No openings, it seems, unfortunately. Not the end of the world, I feel. <laughs> they don't need the Ravage too bad. They're gonna... Another Searing Chains off, and Tide looking to come around from the side here, but... If you're tied, like, what's even the plan? Like, who are you... Maybe, I think the Ember Spirits are your kind of best target if you can try to burst him down, but it's so hard to do so. Yeah, I think that's an ideal world to live in to try to get that pick. Actually, Yamaguchi under the ward. He Chop. won't even get up one rapid. Oh, he does miss the call. That's on cooldown for a while. That's a one-minute cooldown. That's so painful for an axe. Like, it should never be on cooldown if you, if you hit your culling blades, but... We'll see a chase now under the Vengeful Spirit at mid, and Secret with the Flame Guard... Gets him with the slider fist. Now needs an escape though. Doesn't have uh, much mana. Can TP in a second? May just look to do so. No, he's not going to TP just now. He'll pop the drums in. Has a searing chains available, but hey, he'll get the two hero searing chains in. One TP, maybe the move here. He's looking for a rune, and we'll find a regen rune, but not going to make the move down there. He's actually going to be a okay. Meanwhile, his Tons team takes the TP space, bottom yeah. tower. Tons of space created here. Bottom lane just absolutely demolished, and they yep. can just mark on any lane they choose at this point. Uh, 20 to 0. There's not much more to say. Heals up. Vyram is back in and the farm will continue for Lie Gaming. This is this is getting ugly very quickly. I think Tide is like the only hero you, that cannot be caught out. Like, even the bench swap wouldn't have done that much in that situation. 5.9.3 or Oa Jay. was not in Is he getting solo killed here? Okay. That happens. Battle Fury gives him a lot of extra damage, and that's a, just a straight-up solo kill coming out onto the Queen of Pain. I think there was a lot of lag issues coming out from the side of Maneski. Obviously, yeah. Perfect World servers, there's some distance, there's some firewalls, and... Can't check the hard. ping since we're in Dota TV, but... Uh, that's, that's too bad. Um, but yeah, for those of you wondering, we're not in Dota TV. This game started when we're in our previous series, because the Tongfu versus... Uh, what am I talking? Tongfu versus... C deck game went overtime, so because of that, we didn't make it into the next lobby, but we're casting from Dota TV. There's plenty of other action going on here. There's four streams running with BTS2, Lysander's casting over there. Uh, you can check out the watch tab in Dota 2. There's uh, G Guard vs. Immortal Magneto Gaming. There's CSW vs. C deck, which should be a good game. Uh, and then you've got DK vs. Big God as well, which is uh, Burning and Jao Wait's kind of mixed team. I'm not actually sure who's been playing for them so far this tournament. I don't know if you caught who their roster was. I caught it like a week and a half ago, but I'm sure it switched yeah. since then. They've been modifying a lot to try to get the perfect lineup for them. Well, well I, they also have some like restrictions from Ace. Like Burning wasn't yeah. allowed to play at uh, I League, well, I think it was, because he played for IG or something. So 
It's been weird. So we're going to see a blink call here. The Ravage, Ooh. not bad. Catches out two. They want the Rubik. Thinking he's maybe the only kill they can get. Ice Blast comes flying in now, and well, there's just nothing that Maneski can take from this fight. 22 to 0. The dream is real, and well, for Maneski, there's three. not much more they can do from here on out. Except the EG type those score. two magic letters. Jeez, it's just absolutely dominant. Uh, they get the EG score, and then they pump it up plus one to 24 0. And I mean, it's it's an Agonim's axe at 19 minutes here. His kill, killing threshold right now is 450. That is over half the HP for a majority of these heroes. Oh my gosh! Just, yeah, that is that's brutal. Not the best high ground taking lineup, but you're this far ahead. You don't really mind whether you take Raxes now or a bit later on. They're taking all the tier twos. They can fall back for Roshan if they want. Bristleback's probably the one here you want to be like get nice and tanky before you can easily break that high ground, but even without him, he's got a Sanjin Yasha and throw something like an AC or a hat on him and you're pretty good to go for the high ground, but even without these items it feels like light gaming are doing just fine. Yeah. Push coming down bottom. They're probably not going to respond to this, so this will be some easy gold going the way of Maneski, but on mid lane, Yamaguchi most likely going down the kill threshold. One more hit. There's the chop. And, uh, yeah, nah, they don't even get the bottom tower. Like, that's, well, like, it actually did a surprisingly low amount of damage to that tower before Ember was able to respond. He's going BKB, but I don't see this helping against Bristle or Axe at this stage at all. Mm. I'm not, I don't think there's, I don't know what the better item choice is. It just, it's just like, well, great, you're going to have a BKB. If he can even finish that, I don't, I just don't see it doing anything. There really isn't an alternative. The alternative like, of a Necro book is not going to do much yet either. That's just going to feed more gold to light gaming, so... I don't think there's any good item, really. Maybe we see a Curious Snipe? No. Jay not going to spot it out. Jay farming enemy neutrals. This is how desperate this situation has gotten. Yeah, I mean, he just wants to find an Orchid, but really, what is that going to accomplish like, either? I mean, maybe thing, a, yeah. a kill on a support, which, again, would be one more kill than they've been able to acquire this entire game. And Ember's going for possibly the Manta style that we see on a lot of these Chinese Ember Spirit plays when they're up against Orchids and Skywrath Mages to get rid of those silences. Can disjoint Magic Missile as well. Just a lot of nice little things you can do with a Manta style. A nice kind of defensive item. Mm -hmm. um, which also gives you great chasing potential. So here we go. High ground, let's go. Light Gaming, have the Aegis on XDD in the front lines and... It's now up to Maneski to make something happen and... Well, that something may just be their first kill of the game. That's about all I see them maybe getting out of this hole. Yep, Geometry Sight coming out. When you never die, it doesn't really matter if an item drops on death. And they're just going to town on this tier 3. Nice chains coming out. Look at the HP. They could actually Ice Where's Blast ice that. Blast? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Super just withholds. He wants the, the big play just in case they actually engage. They're like, if you cower in your fountain, that's a win for us. So he's just waiting for that jump in. And Yamaguchi's looking for it. There it is. Comes back from the slide of fist, XDD, he's low, but he's got the Aegis. That's not the target you want to go on, and nothing accomplished with a Sonic Wave, Ravage. Everyone's still pretty healthy, apart from XDD, and as I said, he's got the Aegis. Yep, so the standard secret on the Radiant side is able to dodge out of all those abilities with a very nice usage of the Fire Remnant, and there goes mid Rax. Now you make the swing towards the bottom where Axe doesn't have the call right now, but... Still a tough <laughs> Lycan does not want to be fighting this axe right now. Right inside, fairly healthy. Should be able to keep on going. There's your Manta style for Ember Spirit in. Well, Axe can get swapped back. Can they actually bring him down? It doesn't look like it, no. Quickly, Venge is like, eh, bad idea. Yeah, it would At be something point, if they could get the axe. He's got a, a lot of kills underneath his belt. Godlike streak for him would be an insane comeback for them, but they can't even keep their themselves alive inside the base, let alone outside. Well. This is looking like the end from an Eskin game one. It's a two game series, so is that potential for a bounce back? A lot at stake here, and this is where a lot of these teams have been training hard and preparing for this moment. Maneski with a new roster, Light Gaming have been fairly stable for the most part over the last few months, and well, we see them off to a fantastic start here. 28 to nothing, Maneski. Well, this is something they've always been very adamant about. You don't GG until that throne goes down, or at least until you're 100% sure you have no chance left. So they'll play this one out the bitter end here as we'll see some farming going on deep in their base 30 to 0 oh dear it looks it looks like it is going to be a full on shutout they can't even bring down the aegis let alone any full hero here jay's going just completely off the road 
He's just saying, okay, this is not happening. I'll hide in the trees here. Uh, end please is what you type in all chat at this point. Well, now the swing's top lane. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like Jay is doing just that. He's hiding in the trees at top. He's asking them to end it fast. Someone needs to give him the memo that this is not ranked matchmaking. You can GG out. It's not the Pinoy way. Oh, meanwhile, like it. All the <laughs> He's trying to find a place to hide and farm. He's not going to succeed in doing so. Into the trees he goes. <laughs> like and trapped in a little cage. Ooh. And down he goes. Top lane, the rest of the fight's taking place. Maneski, well, no chance for these two. Tiger's blinking in, has a Ravage available, probably won't get the cast, and I they get kill! a kill! Yeah! Hallelujah! Make it two! Aegis had expired, and Bristleback goes down. 33-2. to two. They missed the 3-2-2, they missed the two, two, man. What are they doing? They need so to close. get those two kills faster, and now they get team wiped in their own base. Five dead. Last lane of Rax should be going down. And that does it. Manessi, well, I mean, I don't think it was that that does it. I think it was a good 15 minutes ago where this game was done and dusted, but... Well, I have to say, for Mineski, this Yamaguchi guy must be really carrying the team on his back. He has infinitely more KDA than any other teammate there, so... He's gotta be... Is that 0407? What is this team? But now... Hopefully they actually, like, are using this as an opportunity to talk about the draft and strategy for Game 2 and trying to even up this two-game series. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a long Game 1, which will get us into our, our next series. I think we may be hopping over to the I-League Grand Finals after this, as uh, the Dota 2 Asia Championship action will continue on the other BTS streams and over on Base Skip stream. But this has been a, a very quick and one-sided match. This is the most one-sided game I've seen in a good year or so, it feels like. Or even just, like, every game I've cast over the last two or three weeks, I feel, has been much more neck and neck. There's been a lot of close mm -hmm. Dota oh, games yeah. on these new patches, with partially because of the comeback mechanics, but... Um, just everything else, uh, with a lot of the teams, the competition just getting a lot closer too. Definitely. I mean, a lot of teams are also trying to take advantage of the comeback mechanics by playing these kind of turtly comeback drafts that go yeah. for very greedy heroes, and it, their strategy revolves around starts bringing the game to a very long period of time so that they can win in the end. But maybe another kill coming through. Super dropping low, the Orchid! No, he Ogre's will! Like, easy, Fairly easy multicast. <laughs> The other uh, thing is maybe like with the way the round robin group stage works, maybe there's some time rating that comes into play if there's ties <laughs> later on. So that could be another reason why Mineski want to hang in there and play things out. But I'm not exactly sure on the tiebreaker rules should that occur later on in the group stage. If it if it is indeed time ratings, then yeah. there is not looking too good for them. This is one of the fastest Dota games I've seen in a while, and 39 to three is not a great start here. Hopefully they get their heads in the game for game two. All right, well, good. I actually get a break now after with this game done since we just had a really long Tong Fu vs. C-Deck series, guys. Stick around. We'll have more Dota 2 action coming up next. I believe it will be the I-League Grand Finals starting in about 25 minutes. So uh, I believe Blaze will still be joining me, but you can follow him on Twitter at BlazeCasting. Follow myself at BTS Gods. Tune into all the other BTS streams going on. Lysander on BTS2, Zyklops over on BTS3, and Basekip over on his stream at Basekip. Stick around, guys. More Dota 2 coming up after a bit of a break.